Hello everyone. So let us continue our discussion on the pericyclic reaction. So we are trying to understand the conservation of orbital symmetry theory. In order to understand that fully, we have to first understand how the uh, we have to first understand the molecular orbitals and their symmetry. Okay. So, as discussed in the previous video, we can have two different types of uh, molecular orbitals, usually sigma and the pi bonds. These are the ones that you usually see in organic compounds. And in pericyclic reactions, since we are dealing with uh, more of the pi bond uh, electron rearrangement, we will be concentrating our attention on the pi bond and therefore we are going to right now try to understand the pi molecular orbitals for the various uh, conjugated molecules and uh, for ethene I described uh, in the previous video that uh, the two p orbitals on each carbon atom they overlap to give you the pi bond and since two atomic orbitals are combining it give rise to two molecular orbitals psi1 and psi2 Psi1 is the bonding molecular orbital and Psi2 is the anti-bonding uh, molecular orbital and uh, as you can see since there is a phase change happening so we have a presence of node here. Okay, So this is the uh, molecular orbital uh, for the uh, ethene. Okay. So let us move on further to diene. Uh, uh, a system where we have two conjugated double bonds. Uh, um, for example, in the case of 1,3-butadiene. Okay, so when we talk about a molecule with uh, two double bonds, okay, here we have two double bonds. So they are made by overlap of how many p unhybridized p orbitals? Each uh, one, two. Uh, 3 and 4. So that means there are 4 unhybridized p orbital on these carbon atom whose overlap lead to the formation of uh, pi bonds. Okay. So here we are dealing with 4 unhybridized p orbital. Okay. So that means in this particular molecule we have 4 unhybridized p orbital un hybridized p orbital okay so these are unhybridized uh, atomic orbitals okay unhybridized atomic orbitals so it will it should give rise to how many molecular orbitals four molecular orbitals okay so as we designated in the case of ethene now here we will have shy 1 uh, shy 2 uh, shy 3 and psi 4 okay so we have four molecular orbitals now we know that uh, equal number of bonding and mole uh, anti bonding molecular orbitals are formed so since four molecular orbitals are formed two of them would be bonding so lowest energy would be your bonding molecular orbital and the highest one would be your anti bonding molecular orbital okay so this would be our anti-bonding molecular orbital now let us try to understand in terms of the orbital diagram so as you can see in this figure I started with first all the p orbital are in phase in this particular diagram you can see all the four unhybridized p orbitals are in phase and they are overlapping with each other all the orbitals are overlapping with each other so this is the lowest energy molecular orbital where all the orbitals are in phase with each other okay so this shy one would be the lowest energy molecular orbital okay now the next one so next one would be uh, having at least one node okay so when you uh, the lowest energy would be having no node there would be no uh, node present that means a place where 
uh, the electron density is almost zero because of lack of overlap. Okay, so here uh, in the first case, all there was no node, so the electron distribution was all throughout the butadiene. Okay, now in the next molecular orbital, you have a presence of node. So usually we place the node symmetrically at the center. When there is one, we will place it symmetrically at the center. So when we place it symmetrically at the center, we have two different types of bonding interactions. Here, two of them are in phase and the other half, the two of them are in phase. But uh, between these two, they are not in phase. Okay, that's why you don't see an overlap happening uh, between a second and a third carbon. Okay, so this is the second molecular orbital. Okay, now the third one. So third one means there would be one more node. That means two nodes now present. Now you will try to place these nodes symmetrically. So uh, symmetric position would be these positions uh, when we have four carbon four p orbital when when we need to place them symmetrically we will place them uh, like this okay and uh, when we place the node like this if we place uh, plus minus here obviously after the node the face will change its sign so it would be minus plus and this would also be minus plus only then you would have an overlap happening here because here we don't have a node, that means there is a bonding interaction between these two unhybridized orbitals. And uh, then after the node, again the phase change has happened. So it is the Chi 3. Now in Chi 4, now would be three uh, anti uh, three nodes present. So we place again, uh, now since it is the last molecular orbital, we know bonding will have all the orbitals in phase, the last antibonding molecular orbital, they would be all having out of phase. So that means this won't be in phase with the next, this won't be in phase with the next, this won't be in phase with the next. So it is pretty easy to draw the last uh, molecular orbital diagram. So we have therefore Chi 1, Chi 2, Chi 3 and Chi 4 molecular orbitals for a buta dime. Now, if we try to write the electronic configuration, if we write these lines denoting uh, the, uh, the space where we are going to fill the electrons, uh, how many electrons are there? Since there are four unhybridized p orbitals, so that means there are four electrons. So first two electrons would go to the lowest, then the next would be in this uh, shy two. And the four m orbitals are complete. Therefore, you have uh, uh, now uh, the electronic configuration like this. Okay. Now, if I would like to ask you which is the HOMO and the LUMO, you would be able to quickly tell me which is the HOMO and the LUMO. HOMO means the highest occupied molecular orbital. So, which is the highest mo occupied molecular orbital, which is nothing but Chi 2 in the case of butadiene. And... Uh, LUMO means lowest unoccupied molecular orbit. So there are two unoccupied molecular orbital. The lowest energy is Chi 3. So this is the LUMO of the 1,3 buta dye. So it was pretty easy to understand, uh, identify which is the LUMO and which is the HOMO uh, molecular orbitals in the case of uh, uh, conjugated dye. Okay. Now another uh, thing that I was talking about in the previous videos was symmetric and antisymmetric. Now, how to identify which of the molecular orbitals are symmetric and which of them are antisymmetric? So, this would be the basis on which we are going to decide how the products are formed in a pericyclic reaction. So, it is important for us to identify which is symmetric and which is antisymmetric. Now, a very important guide rule that I would like to say to you is, when we say the uh, orbitals are symmetric, when we are able to put a mirror plane in between them. Suppose in the shy one, we can, if, you, if I place a mirror plane in this area, the half of the molecule would be the mirror image of the second half of the, of the molecule. So that means shy one is symmetric. However, 
if I place a mirror plane at the center of this shy tube, it won't be mirror images of each other. So that means this is anti-symmetric. However, if I place a mirror plane in shy 3, it would be kind of mirror image to the uh, half of the molecule would be mirror image of the second half of the molecule. And therefore, shy 3 is uh, symmetric. However, shy 4 is again anti-symmetric. Now, uh, if those of you who didn't understand what what is the mirror image and how uh, there is complementarity in the mirror image, if you are not able to follow, another uh, very easy way to identify which molecular orbital is symmetric or antisymmetric is looking at the last lobes. Okay, so if you look at the last lobes, if the last lobes have the same sign, okay, if the last lobe are having the same sign, then we say they are symmetric. So, shy 1 is therefore symmetric. Now, shy 2, when we look at the last lobe, plus is above, minus is down, and the last lobe in the case of shy 2 is having minus and plus. So, they are not in phase. So, that means shy 2 is anti symmetric. When we come to shy 3, again look at the last lobe. This is the last. First lobe, this is the last lobe, the end lobes. Okay, look at the end lobes. That is a more correct terminology to be used. Look at the end lobes. So, here the end lobes have the same uh, phase, uh, signs, phase, uh, phase sign. Okay, therefore, shy 3 is uh, symmetric. However, when we look at the end lobes of shy 4, these are the end lobes of the shy 4. They are not in phase and therefore, they are anti symmetric. So, let me quickly write. So, this is symmetric, this is anti-symmetric, this is symmetric, so this is anti-symmetric. So, always it would be found that the lowest energy bonding molecular orbital, they would be symmetric and then the anti-symmetry symmetry would be alternating. Okay, so the lowest is symmetric, anti-symmetric, symmetric, anti-symmetric. Anti so, it is pretty simple to understand in that fashion. Now, here uh, I would like to introduce another important thing to you and that is the fact that how to identify which is anti-bonding and which is the bonding molecular orbital, like when it becomes anti-bonding. Okay, so uh, a guide rule is that if the bonding interactions are more than the nodes, then that particular molecular orbitals would be anti-bonding. Suppose, look at the shy 2. How many bonding interactions here we have? We have two bonding interactions here and we have only one node here. So, that means bonding interactions are more than the nodes. Therefore, this is the bonding molecular orbital. However, if you look at the shy 3, how many bonding interactions are there? Only one bonding interaction is there. However, two nodes are there. So, here the nodes have increased beyond the bonding interaction and therefore shy 3 is an anti-bonding molecular orbital. So, whenever the number of nodes increases than the bonding interaction, that molecular orbital onwards, it is anti-bonding. Okay. So, that you can keep in mind if you are not very familiar how to identify which is the bonding and the anti-bonding. This is very, pretty simple. Once you have four molecular orbital, we know there are equal number of bonding molecular orbital, anti-bonding molecular orbital. So, two of the lowest energy would be bonding and two of the highest energy would be anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Okay. So, this is the molecular energy diagram for the beta diene. In the next video, we will talk about the uh, uh, triene system where three double bonds are conjugated to each other. Thank you.